This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. Get this and get it straight. Crime is a sucker's road and those who travel it wind up in the gutter, the prison or the grave. There's no other end, but they never learn. From the pen of Raymond Chandler, outstanding author of crime fiction, comes his most famous character in The Adventures of Philip Marlowe. Now, with Gerald Moore, starred as Philip Marlowe, we bring you tonight's exciting story, The Long Way Home. The valley floor gave off the kind of heat that ate into you, stayed. I wondered why some 800,000 people voluntarily made the San Fernando Valley their home. It was their problem. My problem at the moment was to make a right turn off Riverside Drive, and I did. Four or five blocks north, I saw the name on the Redwood Post by the driveway. Mr. and Mrs. Enos Hopper. Yeah, this was it. I drove in the drive into the cool oasis, an orderly wilderness of pepper trees, palms, evergreens, and everything else I'd ever seen grown in Southern California. The house sat well back on the lot, very neat. Also redwood to match the post by the driveway. I got out of the car and walked across the grass toward the slightly stooped figure clipping the hedge on the far side of the lot. Oh, oh I didn't hear you coming. I'm sorry. Hope I didn't frighten you. I'm Philip Marlowe. Are you, Mr. Harper? Oh, yes, yes, indeed, Mr. Marlowe. I, I'm glad you're here. Here, yeah. I'll uh, pull up this chair. Oh, that's all right. I'll get it. It's all right. I've got it now. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Sit down, Mr. Marlowe. Oh, well, how about you? Well, if you don't mind, I'll keep on clipping the hedge here while we talk. I feel better doing something, you know. Oh, sure, sure. We uh, could go into the house, I guess, if you'd rather. I, well, it bothers me to be in there now. Yeah, I expect it does. How long has she been gone, Mr. Harper? Well, since uh, Monday morning. Oh? About nine o'clock, I guess it was. She got the laundry together and said she was going to the laundromat. And that's the last time I saw her. Monday, that's two days ago. Did she take the car? No. Amy doesn't drive. I I offered to drive her. The laundromat's about five blocks from here. In that little community center on Riverside, you probably passed it. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And she said no. She thought the walk would do her good. And she hasn't called or anything since, huh? No. No, nothing. Oh. Well, uh, how about friends, relatives? Well, I've inquired around the neighborhood. Uh, you see, we haven't lived here long, Mr. Marlowe. We're not really what you call well acquainted with anyone here. You mean the valley? Uh, well, in California, really. Oh. We're from New Jersey. Came out here right after the first of the year. Amy always wanted to live in California. And, well, we moved out. Yeah, but about those relatives, you didn't say what... Oh, I, uh, I have none uh, living. Oh. Amy does have a cousin out here, a cousin Beatrice, uh, that's all I've ever heard her call, Beatrice. She lives in Burbank. I've never met her. Seems like I've always been busy when Amy's gone over there. Mm-hmm. It's Cousin Ray uh, usually picks Amy up. That's uh, Cousin Beatrice's husband. Well, have you called there since Amy's disappearance? Oh, yes, yes, a number of times, but uh, there's been no answer. And that's odd, too. How odd? Cousin Beatrice is uh, an invalid, Amy says. Uh, that's why she's never come to call on us. Well, perhaps they were out when I called. Maybe so. Tell me, Mr. Harper, you and Amy, have you been happy together? I, I mean, you haven't quarreled or anything. Oh, no, Mr. Marlowe. Amy and I have never raised our voices to one another. We've been very happy. Yeah. Well, it isn't much to go on. Oh, by the way, have you checked the hospital? You know, there could have been an accident. I thought of that first. Yes, I, I called them. no. No one fitting Amy's description. Oh, that's a point about that description. You have a recent picture of your wife? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Uh, uh, Will you come in the house, Mr. Marlowe? I'll get one for you. Okay, sure. Ah, dear. Amy loved it here, Mr. Marlowe. Flowers, big trees, all those plants, you see. Amy cared for them, watered, cultivated them. Yeah. This is her garden, Mr. Marlowe. I'm just trying to keep it. Nice for her. 
He turned finally, a slight little gray man, led the way into the house. I felt sorry for him. Didn't take much to figure that his Amy was his whole life. And in his mild, gentle way, his heart was broken. Inside the house, as neat and well-kept as Enos Harper himself, I got the first real shock of the day. Because the Amy I'd pictured in my mind as Enos spoke of her was nothing at all like the portrait he handed me from the mantel. She's beautiful, isn't she, Mr. Marlowe? Yes. Yes, she is. Yes. She's young, too. Much, uh, much younger than I. Yeah, much. I, I'm a very lucky man, Mr. Marlowe. Uh, well, about this picture, uh, do you have a smaller one, one I can take with me? Why, yes. Uh, uh, one of these on the desk should be about the right size, I should think. I hadn't spotted the gallery on the desk across the room until Lena started for him. A quick count, and I came up with seven pictures of Amy, carefully arranged along the top ledge of the desk. All different, all beautiful. Uh, sensational is a better word, I think. The tinted one showed the hair to be ash blonde, the eyes large and brown, and the mouth full. <laughs> Enos broke the spell. This one, Mr. Marlowe, I... I believe it's Amy's favorite. Oh, thanks. This will do fine. I'd uh, want it back later. Oh, sure, sure. You bet. Now, then, is there anything more? Anything else that might be helpful? Well, let's see. Oh, oh, yeah. That cousin Beatrice, cousin Ray, their address and phone in Burbank, huh? And if they have a last name, that would help. Well, I don't have their address, but I imagine it's in the book. Uh, name's Quinlan. Quinlan? Uh, Ray Quinlan, Burbank. Okay. And by the way, you said the laundromat your wife patronized is in the community center on Riverside? On the north side of the street, just a few doors east of where you turned to come up here. Oh, right. I, uh, I'll be waiting, Mr. Marlowe, if you find out anything. Anything. Oh, sure. Right away. <laughs> The little community had no name, but it had everything else. A series of one of each shops and services, all the way from health foods to a branch bank. Well, I parked on the street in front of the laundromat and studied the picture of Amy Harper again. Tried to figure her with a laundry bundle and couldn't. Tried to figure her with Enos and uh, decided to go back to the laundry bundle. Made more sense. I went inside. Never smelled anything so clean. Morning. Uh, can I help you? Yeah, I'm trying to get a line on someone. A Mrs. Harper, do you know her? Uh, Mrs. Harper. Mrs. Enos Harper. Oh, here. Now look at this. She looks like this. Oh, Amy, sure. Yeah, well, when's the last time you saw her? Well, let's see. A uh, day or so ago, I guess. Uh -huh. uh, let me check the bundles here. That'll tell us. Oh, yeah, here, here we are. Uh, Monday, it was. Monday morning, I think. Yeah, well, what I'd like... Excuse me, but my daughter's double parked out in front. Can I pick up my laundry? You can if you got the right ticket. Oh, yes, yes, here it is. Uh, Banning. Uh, just washed, was it, Mrs. Banning? No ironing? Uh, just washed. Well, uh, here we go. Now, that's uh, 62 cents. <laughs> well, for once, I had the right change. <laughs> thank you. Can I take it out for you, Mrs. Banning? Oh, thank you. No, no, no. I can manage. Oh, and uh, thank you for letting me barge in. Oh, think nothing of it. Uh, what do you mean, uh, you're trying to get a line on Amy? Oh, well, just that. Anyone ever come in with her? No, can't remember anyone. Well, can you remember if you noticed anything special about her when she came in Monday? Yeah. What? You got her picture. Yeah, I mean, beside that. No, she was just Amy. Uh huh. You want to pick up her laundry? I don't have her ticket. I was doing great, huh? Enos had told me Amy went to the laundromat on Monday morning, and now I knew as much as he did. Well, I took a picture with me into all the transportation offices around, bus, train, plane, car rental. Everyone liked the picture, but no one had sold her a ticket on anything. The supermarket and the drugstore were every bit as helpful. And then, then I remembered her green thumb. 
Well, I must say I've seen her many times. Many times. Uh, with Mr. Hopper, of course. Well, do you think you might have seen her Monday? Mm, no. No, not uh, Mrs. Hopper. I do believe Mr. Hopper was in Monday, though. Seems to me it was about his zinnias. Yeah, well... Um, or was it his asters? I really couldn't say. I, I never... believe it was his asters. Of course, it really doesn't matter too much. They're the same family, you know. Who? Zinnias and asters, same family. Oh. Uh, Compositi, you know, that's the family name. I'm impressed, but look, I want to tell you... Can you imagine they used to be called Star Wars? Huh? Star Wars, what a nasty little name for an aster. Have you got a Burbank phone directory? Hmm? No, oh, I beg pardon? A Burbank phone directory. Oh, I thought we were talking about the Hoppers. I thought we were, too. Star Wars. <laughs> Ray Quinlan? That's right. Oh, well, I'm Philip Marlowe, investigating the possible disappearance of Amy Hopper. Amy? Oh, I come in. Thanks. Come in. I, uh, I understand that she's your wife's cousin. What? Oh, uh, Beatrice, yeah. Sit down, Marlowe. Oh, thanks. <clears throat> Enos hired you, huh? Yeah, that's right. He says he's tried to call here several times and no answer. How long has Amy been missing? Since Monday morning. Took some laundry to the laundromat and that's all anybody knows. Have you seen her since then? Heard from her? No. No, I sure haven't. I, uh, we halfway expected to hear from Amy Monday, too. Usually do, but we didn't. Mm. Well, how about your wife? Can I talk to her? Uh, Beatrice isn't here. She, uh, mm. I took her to the hospital this morning. They're going to operate later today. Oh. I hope it does the trick. Yeah, so do we. Oh, that's right. Enos says she's, uh, she's an invalid. Yeah, that's right. How about Amy? I, uh, that's all you know? Just that she left for the laundromat? And got there. That's about it. Crazy. Amy wouldn't just disappear. Wouldn't she? No. No, I... I don't think she would. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I'm in the book, Mr. Quinlan, Central Directory. If you get any ideas, call me, huh? Yeah, yeah, I will. Oh, uh, uh, by the way, were they happy together, the Harpers? Yes. As far as I know. <laughs> The late afternoon sun was just at eye level as I headed west again on Riverside Drive. Cousin Ray was a brown, solid man, not fat, but husky. Not too tall, 5'10", maybe, must be about 35 or so. Enos wasn't home when I got back to Amy's natural habitat, so... On a hunch, nothing more, I checked with the next-door neighbor. <coughs> Mrs. Brownlee, her name was, was spooning her yogurt straight and propelling her patio glider like... She was closing in on the finish line of the Honolulu yacht races. Well, I saw her coming out of the laundromat and offered her a ride home. Uh -huh. Monday was just real warm, you may remember. Or Lulu, yeah. Well, yes, you might put it that way. Mm. Anyway, I told her I was driving right after her. I picked up some wheat germ and some black strap molasses. I'd be going home and that she was welcome to ride with me. Uh-huh. And she gave me that nice smile of hers and says, No, thanks, Miss Brownlee. The walk will do me good. Now, just why a walk in the hot sun would do anyone any good is beyond me. But I'm not one to push myself onto other people. And the ride was there. She could take it or leave it. Yeah, tell me, did you see her after that? Yes, yes, I did. This time from across the street. But there's no mistaking her for anyone else, you know. No, I don't suppose there is. Well, there she was, going into Pliny's. Hey, just a minute, just a minute. Pliny's? The camera shop. Pliny Branstetter's place. Hocus pocus out of focus. Yeah. That's what Mr. Blount calls Pliny. Uh -huh. But then they're in the lodge together, you know. Yeah. Uh, that makes all the difference. Well, I really wouldn't know if she was or not. You see, Pliny's not here. Uh, he had to go to Hollywood for supplies. I don't work here. I'm his wife. Yeah, but if Mrs. Hopper left some pictures here or picked some up, there'd be a record of it, wouldn't there? Mm -hmm. Yes, I suppose there would. I, I, I just left the door open to keep cool. We're really supposed to be closed. Yeah, I realize that. Well, I I just thought for a member of the lodge, you know, Piney might be willing to... Uh... Why didn't you say so? Well, Left I... your emblem on your other suit, I'll bet. Yeah. Oh, Piney does it all the time. You, ma'am. That's right. I'm in the auxiliary. Are you really? Mm -hmm. Well, now, let's have a look here. Um, 
pictures for Mrs. Harper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ought to be here, uh, if they're back yet. Uh, Amy Harper? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> there you are, Mr. Harper. Oh. Uh, mm -hmm. That'll be 73 cents, including tax. Oh, about that. Hm. Um, 73 cents, Mr. Harper. Hmm? Oh, yeah, well, I want to tell you two things. I think Mrs. Harper would want to pick these up herself, and uh, <laughs> I'm not Mr. Harper. I slowed to a walk around the corner, got in my car, and thought about what I'd seen. A cozy selection of pictures taken at the beach of Amy, mostly. But one or two of Cousin Ray lifting weights yet, and one of Amy and Ray together. Who took it? Enos? Cousin Beatrice? Eh, I don't think so. Well, it was almost dark now as I eased the car into Enos' driveway. And when I got there, it was dark. The sky above still held the afterglow of early evening. But the web of compact trees and shrubs that surrounded the Harper house made patches of blackness all around me. I got out of the car and I saw a light somewhere in the back of the house. And back there, too, a faint sound I couldn't distinguish. There was a sudden movement from the hedge behind. Oh, stay out of it, Marlowe. Stay out of it. In just a moment, we will return to the second act of Philip Marlowe. But first, a crossword puzzle traps a criminal tonight on most of these same stations when CBS Radio brings you Gangbusters. This latest gangbusters thriller, titled The Case of the Missouri Puzzle, is law enforcement at its cleverest. Tonight on CBS Radio, you're cordially invited to sit in as an armchair sleuth and enjoy the case confronting gangbusters. And now with our star, Gerald Moore, the second act of Philip Marlowe, and tonight's story, The Long Way Home. a sharp not a pain at the top of my spine. But the bulldozer who jumped me from behind wouldn't settle for that. My face mashed into the dew-soaked grass and I inhaled a lungful of wet vigoro while someone with the strength of ten flailed away at my back. Why I wanted to turn over and take it head on, I'll never know. But I kept trying to turn. I slithered instead, slid along the wet grass with a vice on my back. A vice with a voice that kept hounding me. Stay out of it, Marlowe. Stay out of it. Hey, hey, hey. Hopper. Hey, you had it, Marlowe. Hopper! Hopper! Get off my property now. Go on, get over here. Hey, Hopper. Uh, Mr. Marlowe. What's left of me, you... Oh, I, I don't understand, Mr. Marlowe. What, what happened? Who, who was it? Uh, three guesses. Oh, what do you mean? Skip it. Well, you you, you better come into the house, Mr. Marlowe. Yeah, I'll, I'll help, help you. Uh, easy. Is it loud enough for you to hear out back? Uh, loud enough? Uh, oh, yes, I, I came running, didn't I? Yeah, you should. Sure well, come along now. I, oh. I'll take care of you, Mr. Martin. Someone beat you to it, Ennis. Ah, there now. You should feel better. Should I? Hey, Ennis. Uh, yes? You like the beach? Why, it's all right, Mr. Marlow. I... I'm not much of a swimmer anymore. I... Well, Amy never cared for the beach, so we never went. Uh-huh. Well, why do you ask? Oh, I don't know. Why do you ask anything? Uh, Mr. Marlowe, I know you've been through a lot. I I wouldn't blame you if you'd want to give up looking for Amy. If you Forget would. Forget it, Enos. I'll give up anything. <laughs> Well, so far the case added up to a stiff back and a head wrapped in a tight band of steel with built-in hammer. A few quick blasts at the pint in the glove department helped not at all. But something drove the car. The stop at the hospital in Burbank could have been for personal reasons. The attendant at the main floor desk looked real surprised when I asked what floor Cousin Beatrice was on. It's nearly 9.30. Visiting hours are over at 8.30. Oh, well, I lost track of time, I guess. Uh, can you tell me where she is anyway? I'll come back tomorrow. What did you say the name was? Quinlan. Mrs. Ray or Mrs. Beatrice. Could be either one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Quackenbush. Quinby. Hmm? That's it. No Quinlan list. 
You sure? I just looked. Are you sure? Uh, no, as a matter of fact, I'm not. Thanks for asking me. Oh, Marlo, come in. Yeah, I will. Hey, you look all in. I'm fine. What hospital is your wife in, Quinlan? Why? The one about three blocks from here, just up on Riverside? Yeah, Who yeah. made her up, Quinlan? You or Amy? What do you mean, made her up? Amy never had a cousin, Beatrice, like <laughs> never had a wife of the same name. Well, you know that much. Do you know where Amy is? No. I may get another psychic flash any minute now, like the one I got when you were unlacing my spine a while back. You shouldn't have found out about those pictures. More than that, you shouldn't have gone to tell Enos about them. There's a lot he don't know. Amy doesn't want to hurt the old guy. We've been trying to figure out how to tell him. Have you got any leads on her? Not any real ones. You... Hey, wait a minute. You really don't know where she is. If I knew, I'd be with her. Huh? Hey, tell me, how'd you meet her? At a bar over in Riverside near where she lives. Yeah? She'd already invented Cousin Beatrice all by herself to give her someplace to go. Well, we, we liked it being together. Got kind of brave about it after a while. Sometimes I go right up to her door for her. The rest of the time, we have a regular corner where I pick her up. This corner, is it near our house? Not far. I was supposed to pick her up Monday, but she didn't show up. Yeah. Hey, you know what's funny? I was all set to beat your head flat when I came in. All of a sudden, I don't feel like it. When I got back to the car, I thought my head would cave in. Every inch of me screamed with pain, and sometimes you got to give in to these things. I tried for home, but I only made it to a motel on Riverside. I was out before the light was. I found a barber shop and black coffee the next morning in the community center near Harper's. It was a thick, fuzzy ten o'clock when I reeled out onto the street and headed toward my car. That's the one party, the tall man. Uh, hey, you there. Hey, wait a minute. Me? Yeah, hey, you. Uh, you sure, honey? Uh, I'm sure, all right. Well, what's the trouble? I do something wrong, Mrs. Pliny? Pliny thinks so. Tell him. Well, posing as a large brother when you're not pretty serious, mister, I don't like that. Well, I don't think much of it myself now that I think of it. But we'll skip that. What I want to know is what's the deal with those pictures of Mrs. Harper's? No deal? Why? Everybody's looking at them. Nobody's picking them up or paying wait for them. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do that slow. All right. First, Mrs. Harper comes in. Yeah. Um, um, Monday it was, Monday. And they're not ready yet. She says she'll pick them up later that day. She don't come back. A guy does, though. He just looks at them, smiles, and says she'll get them. Who was he, do you know? Well, I don't know him. He's a young guy, brown hair, got a tan. Uh-huh. Well? Well, in about an hour, another guy comes in, and he looks, but he don't buy. Then last evening, you... Oh, wait a minute. In. That second guy, Pliny, he's older. Small man, gray, about 60? Yeah. Now, here's my problem. Who wants those pictures? It's not your problem, Pliny, old boy. It's mine. <laughs> The house was open, so I walked in. Enos was out in the back, pouring something out of a sack onto a flower bed along the back fence and working it into the soil around the flowers. I looked around and found a bedroom that had to be Amy's. Everything was neat, in order. I turned and started out of the room, and then... then I saw it sticking out from under a cologne bottle on a dressing table. I picked it up, and as I turned to go out... Three matched pieces of luggage pointed an accusing finger. And then I found my way back into the garden. Hey, good morning, Mr. Marner. Have you uh, found out anything? Yeah, I think I have. This laundry ticket, Enos, I found it in Amy's room. Oh? Why didn't you tell me the truth in the first place? I, I don't know what you mean. Amy was here after she left for the laundromat. The ticket proves it. Well, you I... found out about Cousin Ray, didn't you, Ines? You looked at the pictures in the camera shop. Maybe you'd suspected for a long time and this cinched it. So you picked her up on the corner instead of Ray, and you came home. Mr. And Marner. you had a big, fat fight about Ray, didn't you? Right. Yes. Yes, we did. I said some horrible things, Mr. Marlowe. Horrible things. Now you're sorry. And you want it back, don't you? 
Right. I'd give anything to have her back, Mr. Marlowe. I, I love her, you know. Yeah, I know. Enos, I looked through Amy's closet. It's pretty full of clothes. Her luggage is still there. Yes. Amy has a lot of clothes. She she wears them well, too. Amy didn't go very far, Enos. No. The man in the garden shop says you're the gardener around here. Not Amy. Did he? That sack of lime is almost empty, Enos. Fifty pounds is a lot for a garden, isn't it? Depends on what use you put it to, Mr. Marlowe. Did you have to kill her, Amy? To keep her, I did. She wanted to leave me. Go away with him. I couldn't stand that. Did you think I wouldn't figure it out? I didn't know. But I had to find out. Didn't I, Mr. Marlowe? He came with me quietly. Everything about him was quiet and neat and gray. He was the mildest, gentlest man I ever met, and yet he had killed the thing he loved most, his Amy, for the oldest reason in the world. She wasn't his anymore. What was it the old man said? I had to find out, didn't I, Mr. Marlowe? Yeah. Curiosity killed the cat. It also killed Amy. The Adventures of Philip Marlowe, bringing you Raymond Chandler's most famous character, star Gerald Moore, are produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and written for radio by Kathleen Height. Featured in the cast were Bill Johnstone as Enos Harper and Jack Moyles as Ray Quinlan. With Mary Lansing, Sam Edwards, Junius Matthews, Vivi Janis, and Peter Leeds. Gerald Moore may currently be seen in the Santana production, Sirocco. The special music for Philip Marlowe is composed by Pierre Garrigank and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. <laughs> Be sure to listen again next week at the same time when Philip Marlowe says... This time the parlay was divorced to kidnapping to blackmail. And everybody was a wise guy. The dame, the racket boss, and the private eye. But the wisest guy of them all turned out to be an eight-year-old kid. <laughs> What a combination for Tin Pan Alley fans. Steve Allen is MC. His vocalists this week are Peggy Lee and Johnny Desmond. Song publisher J.J. Robbins, band representative Mark Hanna, and composer Mitchell Parrish are the judges. There will be four brand new songs for sale tonight on CBS Radio on most of these same CBS stations. Roy Rowan speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network. Cerebral Cinema hopes you have enjoyed this movie of the mind.